we got about less than a week to the 2023 NBA draft. I tell you, this time goes quick, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm just saying, it feels like just a couple days ago, actually it was about a month ago now, we're watching the draft lottery and the Spurs somehow, coincidentally, absolutely with no planning or rigging going on, won the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes. Because it was 100% above board. It was 100% legit. It was 100% above water. Some of you are going to say, well, if, if the lottery was so rigged all the time, then why did the Pelicans win Zion Williamson's year? Uh, because the Pelicans had just traded away Anthony Davis, or were going to, and they wanted to give that city something to make the franchise somewhat viable there. Like, I'm not going to say every single year it's rigged, but give me a fucking break. There are some times, like when you talk about Chicago with D. Rose, you tell me that was 100% above board? Bullshit. Uh, bu -bu bull la -la -la shit. You've got to be really naive about the way the world works to think that at certain times the NBA doesn't find ways to make certain things happen. Bullshit if you believe otherwise. Because if you were looking at this before the draft lottery and you said, what feels like the right fit across the board for where Victor Wembanyama would end up, it's the San Antonio Spurs playing under Greg Popovich. Right? Come on. Let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. Let's not be delusional here. It's not even conspiracy theory stuff. Like, just sometimes you got to look at some stuff and you say, come the fuck on. Now, as far as Wembenyama, it'll be really interesting to see with San Antonio what that thought process is for the organization. Are they going to be in a rush? Do they feel like Wembenyama is that type of dude that they've got to try and go more all in now? It'd be really interesting to see how that plays out for them, but we know he's going to be the first pick. Like, that's no doubt. What would be really curious to me is if a team made a call to San Antonio to try and trade into that spot, would San Antonio even listen? And if they did, what would be the theoretical price you think it would take for the Spurs to be moved off of that pick? Would it be five first rounders, six first rounders, a couple of players? You guys tell me in the comments. Like, think about this from a mock draft standpoint. We're thinking about all contingencies. I'm sure there's some team or teams that have tried to call the Spurs and say, at least let's make the call, because you got to do your due diligence, at least make the call. How much do you think teams would have to give up to even get the Spurs to consider moving off of that number one overall pick? I'd be fascinated to know. Speaking of fascinated... Michael Jordan bought the Hornets for what, like $250 million back back a while ago? He's going to sell his majority stake for $3 billion as this team is sitting with the second overall pick in the draft. <laughs> That's goat shit right there. Get 10 times the return on your initial investment in a little over a decade, and you didn't do shit with them. That's goat shit right there. Uh, but for Charlotte... It certainly seems like they are pointing towards and poised to take Brandon Miller, the wing from Alabama. And this makes sense. Like, if I was comparing him to Scoot Henderson, you say, well, if you think Scoot Henderson's the better player, you just take him and you figure it out, and you figure out how he fits with LaMelo Ball. Nah. Like, I understand sometimes the thought of, especially more and more with the NBA, as you talk about really positionless basketball on the wings and the perimeter. You do have to have some type of flow and chemistry there. And I think Brandon Miller fits better alongside LaMelo Ball than a Scoot Henderson does. Which brings us to that third pick in Portland where shit could get really interesting, right? Because there's a lot of talk about what are, could the Blazers be doing here. You know, the, the kind of consensus seems to be right now that Scoot Henderson would be that third overall pick. But will Portland keep him? And it feels like they're motivated, highly motivated perhaps, to keep Damian Lillard happy by moving that third overall pick as part of a package to get an established guy, get a big star. Now, I've seen some reports, you know, they're talking about Bradley Beal, but it seems like maybe the Phoenix Suns are the spot for him. And there's been some talk of the Blazers, 
being interested in the Bulls, Zach Levine, oh, please, for the love of God, make that happen. Please, for the love of God, make that happen. <laughs> if they would be stupid enough to trade, let's say, the third overall pick, Anthony Simmons and somebody else, to get Zach Levine, the Bulls would be fucking clowns not to do that goddamn deal. Take Scoot Henderson, then find a way to sign and trade Vucevic, trade away DeRozan, and blow the fucking thing up and start over, which is what the hell they should be doing. So with Portland, you know, it seems like Scoot Henderson will be the pick in that slot. Whether he ends up ever suiting up for Portland feels far, far less certain. Um, as you look at my mock draft here, some other things that can kind of stand out. This is another draft that's really heavy on the wings. You know, you think about the two and the three. Uh, not really um, big on like more traditional size profile big men. Like you got Jarris Walker at Houston. You wouldn't exactly look at him as you're kind of like prototypical four. A um, lot of guys that kind of fit that tweener build, which, you know, in previous years and years past, that kind of tweener label would harm some of these guys as prospects. But I just don't think it's as much of a deal anymore with the NBA because look at how many teams you watch where their money lineup or their death lineup is four wings and some type of undersized big at playing the five, right? A lot of teams, that's their money lineup. So... You know, it, it opens up all types of interesting possibilities. Like when you talk about Detroit, you say, well, you've already got Cunningham. You've got Ivy. Why the hell would you take uh, either one of the Thompsons? In this case, I got, I'm taking Asar because it doesn't really matter <laughs> because those three guys would be on the court together a lot any damn ways. And in this, in this modern game that's so heavily based on the perimeter and the three-point shot, you, know, you sacrifice size you know, down low for some of that versatility on the wings. Um, in terms of other players that I kind of look at, and I'm interested to see uh, where they go, I look at Taylor Hendricks from UCF. You know, it feels like right now, if, I, if I'm reading the room right, like it's Wembenyama, it's Miller, it's Henderson, and then it's the Thompson Twins are your top five picks. So then you get to like Orlando in six and you say, who is the guy? And I look at Hendricks as the guy to me that has the most athletic upside. Um, so he would make a lot of sense. And, you know, a front court of him and Wagner and Carter could be really intriguing in the long term. Um, I'll be really curious to see as well what Dallas does with that 10th pick. Like, credit to them. They intentionally sabotaged themselves late. They said, we're, we're going to find a way to keep that 10th pick. You know, I've got them taking Grady Dick from Kansas. We, we'll see who they end up taking, but for for them to kind of sabotage their season late, they, they better make sure that this pick pays off whatever the hell it is. I'm going to tell you right now, I look at this draft class and I'm not incredibly impressed. You know, like this feels like another one of those drafts. And, and you can say that about a lot of these drafts where guys picked between six and 20 are so damn similar that, you know, you could see a lot of guys you saw projected mock drafts going in like 16 to 20 range, end up in the 10 to 15 range. It feels like really interchangeable. So we'll see how much trade action there is on draft night. We'll see who ends up going where. I'll come back with one more mock draft right before. Um, but it is close at hand, and we will see what happens. Hopefully it'll be an interesting night, and hopefully the Bulls will be trading Zach Levine. Yes! <laughs>